Chegamos na Metal Conda. Tchau, Gustavo. Gente, muito legal. Olha o tamanho da feira. Várias pessoas, várias máquinas. Vamos começar a ver novidades? Vamos começar. Gente, olha que legal. Primeira barraquinha do Taiva, que tá do Pom. Então, isso daqui não é Taiva de parede. Isso aqui é subcobertura que a gente bota debaixo do telhado para não dar infiltração. Então vocês podem ver que tem uma subcobertura para cada tipo. Essa aqui é para telha é, metálica, essa aqui é de aço. Então, ó, é uma subcobertura de 200, ok? Aqui é para telha de... de pedra. Isso a gente não tem no Brasil, né? A gente usa telha cerâmica. Então esse é o outro, que é o Tyvek 160, que eles chamam. E esse aqui é para telha shingle, que a gente vê que o pessoal aqui no Brasil chama de subcobertura. Então vocês veem que, pô, uma coisa legal, eles se importam muito de você não ter problema de infiltração no telhado. E desenvolveram diversos produtos, um para cada tipo de telha. Você vê que é certo, né? Porque as telhas não são todas iguais, são bem diferentes. Então é bacana também que tem o quê? Tem um antiderrapante para o cara não escorregar. Então se você passa a mão aqui, ela é antiderrapante. Para quando você estiver instalando o produto, eles não escorregarem. FedEx, we have a 16 foot run here. Ele vai começar a fazer a instalação. Don't roll out and lay flat. This is going to back roll a little bit, but you're going to see that that base layer has now clung and bonded to the the sheet. It's gripping it. Um, to the point então, where it's laying flat and smooth. Repositioning though is really tá simple. I can still pull tight. I've only got three staples in it. Fácil. And I'm able to reposition it where I need to to make sure I'm right on the edge of my roofing. So now, I've got three staples on that end. A 16 foot run, three staples here. You would not stand on top of a synthetic with just six staples in it. Right? Because é, that is a slip hazard. You know those are going to tear out and someone's going to go for a fall. The reality is that base layer is designed to take my body weight, transfer it through, so it's actually got better grip to the sheet. É, tá That's pretty de darn de impressive. The fact that né, six 3 crown staples are holding então, the 16 foot de run de in, and I'm able to walk on it very comfortably is impressive. For me, that's a peace of mind for my guys. They realize that once they put this down, it's down. It's not going to fall off. It's not going to tear off from underneath their, their feet or anything of that nature. Now you're saying, all right, well, I'm dropping bundles or I'm, I'm working with... I want to show how well the we should have tears. We should have pulls through every one of those staples. We're talking about a 16th of an inch kerf. That should have torn right through. You're going to be able to walk on this afterwards, you're going to be able to see it and realize that there's no holes. You can't even see sheathing through that, which means that I have not done any damage to the water proofing up this product. I have no opportunity for a leak there because of how strong that product is. But now, when you're walking on it, when you're, when you're working on it, again, is that peace of mind for your installer knowing that, hey, this product's solid. Then you see the top layer, right, which is the embossing. So again, yeah, cross training is really easy for our employees. It's easy to use, easy to understand. You're going to see on the horizontal, there's dotted lines that are one inch apart. So now we chalk lines all the time on our roofs. If you're in a northern climate where you have ice and snow and everything else, you're going to use a peel and stick to do that transition. But if you're in Arizona, you don't have to worry about that. So we show a sidewall. Make sure you go up those sidewalls eight inches, just like you would with your ice and water. Right away saying, well, go to the warehouse. Ele Grab the project because o é muito we're not going to use this other stuff they sell. Again, it's the little things that matter, right? So most synthetics, you have a label and they dual purpose that. That channeling allows the water to flow and release off the roof line. Anything that stays on top beads up, you can see it, but it's wet. Who would Never stand on a wet synthetic. Never mind, jump on it. The reality is, at the end of the day, if it starts raining, my team's not stopping, dropping, rolling, going to get tarps and furring strips and everything else to make sure that that, that house and that client is protected. We just continue to put 
Yeah. You get on your shoes shield. around the work site. You come up the ladder. Ladder. The six first six feet around the ladder is where we find uh, a dirt hazard most commonly, and it's because it's coming off of your feet. So what grinds is right in there, but you're going to see that the fibers in that top embossing actually grip the dirt and it grips the sole of my shoe. So then it's no longer a hazard. Now common sense kicks in. You know, if you see dirt, you're not going to step on it. But what's the, the chance where you don't see it because you're working, you're doing something else. And then all of a sudden you're on top of it. This ProTech gives us the time to react to that because we're not slipping, we're not falling. It's holding our body and our positioning. So for our installers, they have a peace of mind that all they got to do is work. They don't have to worry about the safety and their comfort underneath their foot. So we do a lot of uh, custom roofs for other builders and um, working with other builders is always fun. Uh, I'll get a phone call saying, hey, Walt, uh, our roof is going to be ready for you Wednesday. Um, I know that that means six inch uh, round staples holding that down. Uh, most synthetic manufacturers require cap staples. You all know that cap staples do not work with metal roofing. Uh, it will telegraph through that roof afterwards. It's the worst thing in the world. Um, DuPont says, hey, you know what? Depending on how long you're going to leave it open, we recommend cap stabling. But and we started drywalling before I ever put a tile down. Protegendo Three o telhado, months. ou seja, it was impressive. você pode deixar a casa sem telhado, só com essa cobertura, né, com essa Minimum saiva, order on the logo e que aí is going to be não chove dentro da construção. Keen, but Andrew, can you... Teve um cliente dele que ficou yeah, três meses demorando para escolher qual telha usar.